Hi everyone and welcome to this week's crime and punishment story. Before we begin, can I just say if you do enjoy this story, please give the video a like or a thumbs up as it really does help me to know that you really do enjoy the stories I am creating. And please do subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more stories like this one or stories about various aspects of the history of the Northeast. James Rule was around 33 years old, having been born in around 1866. Dates and ages are often not exact, so I say about or around as the details may not be 100% correct and often vary from article to article. James was killed in Newcastle upon Tyne in March of 1899. His killer was a lady by the name of Marion Edith Morell. She was around 23 years old at the time and worked as a barmaid. Was Marion truly guilty of murder? This is her story. Not much is known of Marion's early life. She had been born in around 1876. The location and her parents are unknown, although it is possible that she was born in the Aylesby area. It was stated that she had previously worked as a domestic servant, but for some time had been working as a barmaid, with her most recent position being in the Collingwood in Newcastle. However, she had recently lost this job, though no reason was given for why she had lost her job, and this had upset her a great deal. She shared a home with Alice Robertson in Gateshead. Alice is most likely not her sister, but Marion does describe her as this in her letters. But during the later trial, Alice is not called as the sister of the accused, and she simply states that she has known Marion for several years. But it was not unusual for people to class others as relatives when they were not. Marion and James had been courting for around 18 months. It is not explained how they first met, but it could be assumed that they met due to her work as a barmaid. But all was not as it seemed, as James had another lady, known as Miss Ray, who at the trial claimed to have lived with him for some 11 years on and off. I was not able to find any actual details of them living together, and although I said this was indeed true, the only form that I found showing the address in Snowden Street where they lived listed James alone as the resident with no mention of Miss Ray. Whether Marion had always known about Miss Ray is not stated in any reports, but she had certainly known about her in the last few weeks before she shot and killed James. It was also not disclosed as to whether or not Miss Ray had known of the relationship between James and Marion, but it is possible that she did know. According to Alice, James had often called at the house she shared with Marion and had even taken her away for a week's holiday to Scotland and she, Alice, thought the relationship was an honourable one. James was described as being a man who was not now in legitimate employment but was a bookmaker and attended race meetings and as a betting man this appeared to be how he earned his living. Just prior to the shooting in late February, James went to visit Marion at her home. Alice said she was unaware of what they had talked about, but after James left, she described Marion as being very upset, so much so that she did not sleep all night, but she did not explain why she had been upset to Alice. On the night of March the 2nd, 1899, James had been in the company of two men by the names of Mr Byrne and Mr Douse. They had been in the Scotch Arms in Newgate Street and when they left this pub Marion was outside and she approached James and they all then went on to the Plough Inn. After leaving this pub James had asked his friends to wait for him while he walked with Marion. It seems that they then walked slowly behind the couple. They headed to Grey Street and then into Hood Street where several witnesses testified that they seemed to be in deep conversation. They then went into Pilgrim Street. It is here that one of the men asked James if he was going home and he said, yes, in a minute, wait for me by the lamp. The lamp was at the top of Pilgrim Street, so his friends went and stood there to wait. James and Marion carried on walking down Pilgrim Street. It was said that there was no loud argument or anything to attract the attention of passers-by, but Marion suddenly turned to face James and raised her hand. A shot was heard, though some who saw the incident simply described seeing a flash 
and James was said to stagger backwards, but at this point he did not fall. People, including a passing policeman, began to run towards the couple, but before they reached them, a second shot was heard, and this time James is said to have fallen into the road. When those approaching reached the couple, Marion was leaning over his body. He was still alive at this time. One witness said he had seen Marion make a motion as if throwing something from her hand. It is supposed that this was the gun, as it was found in the roadway beside James. By now, the policeman had arrived, and Marion is said to have asked him, Is Jim dead? The policeman's response to this is a little confusing. One report states that he said, I think he will die, but another said that his reply was, I doubt he will die. Marion's reply was said to be, Thank God for that, but which response she was replying to is not quite clear. It was at this point that she then fainted. After she was revived from her faint, she was arrested for attempted murder and taken to the police station. It was here that Alice later visited her and she could not believe that Marion had shot James. It is alleged that Marion told her, yes Alice, I was forced to do it, but no reason for her saying this was ever explained. James Rule died at the Newcastle Infirmary on March the 4th, 1899. Marion was now charged with willful murder. The inquest into his death stated that he had died due to the gunshot wound to his head. The first shot fired had apparently passed through his arm and had not caused his death or indeed much damage, and if it had just been this one shot, he would have lived. However, the second shot had entered his brain, and it was this shot that caused his death. The trial date was July the 12th, 1899. Marion was in quite a distressed state and when she was asked if she was to plead guilty or not guilty, she replied, guilty. However, her defence lawyer quickly corrected her and she then replied, not guilty. This would not be the only mistake of the trial. It was stated that on the day of the crime, Marion had gone into a local shop in Collinwood Street, where she had bought a revolver and several cartridges. She was identified by a witness by the name of Mr Fothergill, who also identified the revolver found at the scene as the one he had sold to Marion. It was said she bought 50 cartridges and over 40 were found at the home where she lived. Marion, it seems, had initially bought the gun with the intention of taking her own life and not to shoot James Rule. A letter was produced that had been written by Marion to Alice. I will not read the entire contents of the letter as it's quite long, but some of the main parts are as follows. Marion stated that she intended to end her miserable life. She said she had had a long talk with James and no matter how hard he had tried, he was unable to get the other woman to leave him as she would not go. She said Jim, as she called him, had told her they could not marry unless they were to leave Newcastle. She said they had tried before to save money to leave and move to Australia where his brother lived, but this had proved impossible. She asked Alice to take all of her belongings, but not the ring that she wore on her finger, as Jim had bought this for her on their trip to Scotland, and she wanted to keep it even in death. She also wished for Alice to take Jim's photo to frame it and hang it in her room. I must add that I feel that this is an odd request, which I am sure if Marion had taken her own life, Alice would have found it hard to do, as she would no doubt have felt her death was due to James, and would not want to be looking at his photo in her own home. Marion went on to say that she viewed Jim as one of nature's truest gentlemen. She then went on to tell Alice how much she loved her, how kind she had been to her, and how she was her more than sister. She asked her to remember her fondly, and she then said, Ask them to bury us together. This small part is something we must come back to in a little while. The letter was neither signed nor dated, but it was claimed that Marion had written it on her return from buying the revolver. Alice Robertson described Marion as a steady and respectable girl. On the night that she had not slept, which I mentioned earlier, Alice said that Marion had said she felt unwell and that she felt ill all over. She also stated that she was a hard working and did not like to be out of employment. She also went on to say that she had heard the couple talking and heard mention of settling down, which she took to mean marriage. 
The subject of the previous letter then came back up and it was asked what did it mean by bury us together. The prosecution took this to mean James and Marion. Marion did not seem to know what it meant and she actually said she was amazed to see that she had written this. She could not explain it and she got very upset and had to sit down. I have to admit from a personal point of view, when I first read this I felt she meant for herself to be buried with Alice, but later I thought perhaps she did indeed wish to be buried with James, but not that she actually intended to kill him. But that is just my thoughts. Please do let me know what you think she meant. Certainly when the letter had previously been read out at the inquest, the jury had a clear idea of what she meant as a verdict of guilty of murder had been returned. Marion was very distressed throughout the trial. Several times she broke down in tears. Another letter was alluded to. This had been sent anonymously to Miss Ray, the lady who claimed to live with James. At the time of the news reports, it was described as being unfit for publication, so the contents of this letter are unknown. However, it came to light that Marion had a disease that she had contracted from James, and it is to believe that the letter was about this. It would seem that James was not quite the gentleman Marion believed him to be. Further witnesses were called who all described what they had seen on the night of the shooting. I won't go into detail about what they said, as it is all pretty much the same as what I described earlier with regards to the scene in Pilgrim Street in March of 1899. The jury then retired to consider their verdict and some 20 minutes later they returned with a verdict of guilty of manslaughter. The judge misunderstood the verdict and assumed the black cap and was beginning to pass sentence when it was brought to his attention that Marion had not been found guilty of murder. It is not made clear in any of the reports if he apologised for this mistake However, he went on to pass a sentence of five years imprisonment. Marion appeared to be visibly relieved and was removed from the dock. It would appear that Marion did not serve her sentence locally. She ended up in Aylesbury. This may possibly have been closer to her family. It would seem that she was also hoping to be allowed out before her five years had passed as an application to leave was made in February of 1902. However, she died later in prison in around December of 1902. Her cause of death was unknown. It is to be doubted that her wish, if indeed it was her wish, to be buried with James was ever granted. I hope you have enjoyed this somewhat sad tale of a failed romance with a tragic end. If you have enjoyed it, please do give the video a like. And please do subscribe to the channel if you would like to hear more stories like this one. Thank you all very much for watching.